At least 43 communities across Alberta and B.C. have reached record lows over the past two days. A continuation of months of extremes on the West Coast, including a deadly heat dome, devastating wildfires and catastrophic flooding. Look at that weather system. It is active, moving its way through the GTA. Toronto and the GTA hit with a massive snowstorm. Passive house in the face of climate change. We know the world is in crisis, and Passive House brings real solutions to the table to help us address both climate change mitigation and climate change adaptation. We should look to the Passive House community to find ways to avoid building anything less than Passive House. While other building standards are busy trying to find ways to be net emissions, on the gross overuse of energy, we should continue to focus on the fact that Passive House is already 70 to 90 percent lower on emissions. As a parent myself, I can fully appreciate the benefits of Passive House as a choice for a daycare facility. Um, Passive House provides a great thermally stable indoor environment, which in light of events like the heat dome that we saw last year in British Columbia can make a huge difference, and also great indoor air quality. Um, an active ventilation system provides a continuous flow of outdoor air, which means uh, interior air quality is great, and in light of events like pandemics, uh, forest fires, with the filtered air that's received in a passive house building, it can be a great environment for children. Across Canada, we know that 30 to 40 percent of GHG emissions come from buildings. In places like Vancouver and Toronto, it's as high as 54 percent of GHG pollution coming from buildings. Passive House brings a real solution to that problem. Using Passive House, we know we can drive down GHG emissions significantly and build a safer, better place to live and work. The cost benefits for me are twofold. We have the savings from the low consumption, which is a day-to-day -day thing, and we'll see that throughout the life of the building, but also future-proofing for when all building standards come up to this level in the coming years. The modern passive house approach allows us to return to the roots of the land and live the way Indigenous peoples had lived for millennia. Uh, you never inherit the land from your from your parents or from your grandparents. You're always uh, borrowing it from the future generations that haven't been born yet. You are the stewards of the land to keep that land pristine, keep it in existence for the future generations. Building codes are changing as they address the climate crisis. And that means those of us who work in the passive house world will be called upon more and more to bring our expertise to the table. I'm so glad you're able to join us so that we can share solutions about how Passive House can address the climate crisis today and tomorrow.